Mac OS Sequoia is probably the single biggest update that Mac has ever had. And in this video, we'll explore my top eight picks for the most game-changing features. And to top it off, I'll talk about two more bonus features that will absolutely amaze you. If you have a device that's 2018 or later, you should be able to run this new OS. And if you have a Mac with an M series silicon, you get support for Apple intelligence. Let's dive in. This is by far one of the most significant features releasing on the Mac OS Sequoia this year. It's Apple's logical step forward in their handoff and universal control rollout. Remember universal control? It lets you control your iPad from a nearby Mac. Now you can do the same with your iPhone. You'll have full access and control of your iPhone and its apps directly from your Mac. And even if your iPhone is in your pocket, your bag, or in another room, it doesn't really matter. Navigation between apps and pages are effortless using your Mac's interface. You can type messages or emails seamlessly using your Mac's mouse, the trackpad, or the keyboard. And you can even drag and drop images from your Mac to your iPhone and send them via WhatsApp, for example. Want to screen record while using a specific iPhone app? Do it right from your Mac. Super useful for developers, marketers, or YouTubers like me. And you know what's the best part? Your iPhone can stay in your bag, locked, and even while charging on a MagSafe charger. Sometimes web pages are too busy for your liking, with too many images, ads, and information that you don't want to see. While you can put some website pages in reader mode, you can't do it for all of the pages. Until now, you couldn't remove selective elements, but that's changed. Now you can. In the Safari address bar, click on the icon on the left-hand side, and you'll notice an option called Hide Distracting Items. Once you click on that, you can select website panels you don't want to see. You'll watch them disintegrate, leaving the page much cleaner. But this reminds me of the Thanos snap integration effect from the Avengers movie. When you're done, click on the Done button and you'll continue to see the cleaner page. Even if you revisit the site, you will see the cleaner version. However, you can also go back and click Show Hidden Items to restore the page. While this is not foolproof, ads keep refreshing and websites may add more panels. It allows you to take cleaner screenshots and enjoy distraction-free browsing on your Safari browser. One feature that Mac users have long envied from Windows is the ability to resize and snap windows easily. While there are numerous free and paid options available, such as Magnet, Divi, Rectangle, Grid, Amethyst, Petasnap Tool, and Moom. Wow, that's a mouthful. Mac OS now offers this functionality natively. You can now move and resize windows using the menu, the shortcut buttons, or by simply dragging the window to your desired corner while holding the Option key for quick snapping. Although I'm accustomed to using Magnet and continue to rely on my Stream Deck shortcuts for windows resizing, those who haven't invested in third-party solutions may find this native feature sufficient. Apple Reminders is getting a long-awaited feature, calendar integration. You'll now be able to create, edit, and delete reminders directly from within the calendar app. Let's say you've jotted down a few reminder items for today in the Reminders app. You will see these in the All Day section of the Apple Calendar. You can move these reminders to specific times, add relevant information, check or uncheck items, and the Reminders app updates all of this simultaneously. If a reminder has sub-items and you try to tick it off in the calendar, you'll get a confirmation alert about these sub-items. Creating a new reminder from the calendar app is simple. Click on a new event and change it to a reminder. You can set this as an all-day reminder of a specific time. One feature I sorely missed was the ability to schedule messages, but not anymore. Now you can type a message, press the plus icon, click send later, and set the date and time for sending. And after scheduling, the message appears in dotted lines. When the specified time arrives, it will appear in the receiver's inbox. Apple has long had access to our passwords through the Keychain app, which was hidden in the settings. Now they've created a dedicated passwords app. 
Currently, there are multiple third parties password managers like 1Password, LatePass, ProtonPass and Bitwarden. And you might be using one of these. When you open the Passwords app, you'll find all the passwords that you've stored in your keychain as well as any new ones that you've created. It includes a codes section which fetches two-factor authentication codes similar to what you'd get from Google Authenticator, Authy or any other similar app. There's also a list of Wi-Fi passwords for networks you've previously connected to. When setting a passwords app, you can choose which passwords that you want to share with the family or other groups. Apple has done a great job simplifying security. Passkeys also offers an easy way to create and store passwords, something elderly users won't fear and won't need to jot down on paper or in a notebook that becomes crucial to find later. It syncs seamlessly across all devices, your Mac, the iPad and an iPhone. And it seems you can even access passwords from a Chrome extension for Windows users. However, it currently lacks the ability to store non-login information like passport details, credit card information or other sensitive documents. It also doesn't offer the granular classification, search and password storage features that paid third-party apps provide. One concern is that the password app can be opened with just your phone's passcode without any additional layer of security. This is worrisome. The vulnerability increases when you use cross-platform devices like Macs or iPads, and there might be some office admin who has access. You can now use Math Notes, a feature I previously demonstrated for the iPad, which is now available for the Mac as well. For instance, in the Notes app, you can perform a simple addition, say 9 plus 14 and press return. The result appears almost instantaneously. You can also use variables like A and B to generate results using simple equations. This functionality is integrated into the calculator app which has undergone a significant refresh. At first glance, it looks similar to what we're used to seeing. However, you'll notice this new calculator button at the bottom left that brings up options for basic, scientific, programmer, math notes, and conversion. The conversion feature is particularly useful for quick currency conversions. For example, I could use this to convert from USD to Malaysian Ringgit. This app is now universal across the iPhone, the iPad and the Mac. A new feature in the scientific calculator is the ability to use parentheses for PEMDAS calculations. Apple Intelligence, arguably the most anticipated OS level change, is now available on all Apple silicon based Macs, iPads and iPhone 15 Pro and later models. It's worth noting that Apple Intelligence is no longer restricted to the US region, although there are some limitations that you may still have if you're a user in the EU and China. You might be curious about the current capabilities of Apple Intelligence. Let's explore some key features. One of my favorite functions is the ability to remove information from screenshots or photographs. To use this feature, simply click on the Edit button, then select Clean Up in the center panel. This activates a brush tool, allowing you to erase any unwanted information. If it's your first time using this feature, the system will prompt you to download Clean Up. Interestingly, this feature works offline. You can test this by turning off Wi-Fi, indicating that it operates on device without an internet connection. When reading articles in Safari, you can now enter the reader mode and click on summarize. The system quickly analyzes the article and provides a concise one paragraph summary. Similarly, emails now feature a summarize button at the top, offering a quick overview of the opened message. Writing tools are now integrated across the OS in all native apps and will be available in third party apps that choose to implement these features. To access these tools, type a message, select it, right click and choose writing tools. This opens several options to enhance your text effortlessly. You can rewrite text, adjust the tone to be friendlier, make it more concise, generate a summary, or even extract key points from your message. Another fantastic feature is the ability to create voice recordings with transcripts directly in the Notes app. After recording, you will have both an audio file 
to listen to and a word by word transcript to view or to copy. What's even better, you can use Apple Intelligence to summarize the content for you. Now let's discuss the two bonus features. Check out this video on the redesigned Apple Notes in macOS Sequoia for all the latest updates. And for details on Apple's Freeform's impressive updates, check out this video.